The stretch that Matt Boldy's on in March is too hot to be called a heater. Matt Boldy's walking on the surface of the sun right now. So what caused it? Where do we go from here? Can he keep it up? We discuss on today's episode of Locked on Wild. You're locked on wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you, as always, for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. Just a reminder, make sure you subscribe on YouTube and wherever you listen to your podcasts absolutely free of charge. On today's episode of Locked on Wild, we talk about the seismic run that Matt Boldy is on, absolutely dominating the month of March. We'll look historically at where this stretch stands up amongst the all-time wild greats, and how it has transformed the Minnesota Wild so far this season. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider, and there's really no other way to put it. Matt Boldy is on a sensational run for the Minnesota Wild right now. Take a look at this. Nine games ago, And this, uh, according to Michael Russo, nine games ago, Matt Boldy had 17 goals in 65 games. That was a 21-goal pace. Now, he's up to 28. And so, the month of March has, in no short terms, been an absolute heater. An elitor, you might say, for Matt Boldy. He's got 12 goals in the month of March. That is tops in the NHL, tied with Clayton Keller in that span. He's got 17 points in those 12 games. And more importantly, the Minnesota Wild have found a way to weather the loss of Kirill Kaprizov as they just continue to find ways to win games without their top player in action. I've got a bunch of tweets lined up that I just want to read through and just give you a sense of the historical run that Matt Boldy is on here in the month of March. So Boldy had a hat trick against the Seattle Kraken. Turns out he's had a few of those. Since the 2000-2001 season, only five NHL players have posted more hat tricks before turning 22 than Matt Boldy. That list includes Patrick Laine, who leads with eight. Marion Gabrick and Steven Stamkos tied for second with five. Alex DeBrincat and Connor McDavid tied for fourth with four. And Matt Boldy with three. And two of those come in within the last three games. Some notes from Minnesota Wild PR. Matt Boldy led the Wild with his third career three-goal game and first natural hat trick to lead the Wild, uh, to help the Wild maintain their lead ahead of the Avalanche. Boldy has now totaled 12 goals in March and became the third Minnesota player with as many in a calendar month, joining Kirill Kaprizov, who did it last month, uh, last March, with 14 in 2022, and Eric Stahl, who had 13 in February of 2018. Boldy joins Kaprizov, on February 26th, 2023, is the second Wild player this season to record a natural hat trick, marking the first time in franchise history that two skaters have achieved the feat in the same campaign. So, the month that Boldy is having right now has been done two other times in franchise history. Kirill did it last year, and then the only other time that that's happened is 2018. But there's more. Matt Boldy becoming the fourth U.S.-born player to record three hat tricks before the age of 22, joining Jimmy Carson with seven and Alex DeBrincat and Jeremy Roenick with four apiece. I, I think the craziest part of this is how quickly it seemed like things flipped 
I mean, at at 65 games into the season, Boldy was sitting at 17 goals. And we said on this show that uh, we thought that I thought he was going to keep this run going and get to the 30 goal mark by the end of the season. I didn't think he'd get there by the end of the week. And it just has, he has become the no questioned number one option for this team and has helped turn this team into one that is able to score and is able to do so in very quick fashion. Kirill Kaprizov was 40% of the Wilds offense before he got hurt. And I don't know how you expect a team to offset that other than by everybody else kind of stepping up and uh, and sharing the burden and being able to kind of offset everything that way. But Oldie has just, he has been unbelievable. We'll, we're going to dive into some of the reasons why, because there are a couple of factors that I think have helped, certainly, but make no mistake about it. This is a guy stepping up and and climbing to the front of the front of the line to help this team continue to find ways to win games without Kirill Kaprizov. 6-1 and 2 without Kirill in the lineup and Matt Boldy has 11 game 11 goals in that 9 game span. It's it's unreal what he is being able to do and the point that I made after the Kraken game that we will also dive into a little bit here coming up next is a lot of these goals. It's not like they're just, you know, leaking in. It's not like he was able to kind of muster one past Philip Grubauer um, against the Kraken or some of the other goals. Like these are lasers that he is depositing at the top of the net. He's getting it past goalies. He's putting them in spots where it is nearly impossible to make saves. So he just has transformed into this no questioned lead scorer for this team that uh, is it, it, continuing to hold serve, if not do a little better without Kaprizov uh, with Boldy on this run that he's on. The one final note that I'll leave you with before we get into some of the reasons as to why this has occurred is that Boldy is two goals away from matching Marion Gabrick's 30-goal season, which also occurred in his second season in the NHL at the uh, age of 20 and 21. Boldy also has a chance to match Gabrick's points during that season. And uh, there are eight games to play there. He needs 10 points. So he's got a chance to do what Marion Gabrick did in his second season in the NHL at the age of 20 and 21. Just un unreal what Matt Boldy is continuing to do for this team as they navigate through the rest of the schedule. That tidbit, uh, courtesy of the MNW Young Guns uh, on Twitter, uh, an account that you definitely should follow if you don't. They keep an eye on everybody in the farm system for the Minnesota Wild and do fantastic work with it. So what has keyed Matt Boldy getting into this just torrid pace that he's on? Well, we'll discuss. There are a few factors, and uh, we'll discuss them all as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wild after a word from our sponsor, which for today's Locked On Wild Podcast is the official sports betting partner of Locked On. That is FanDuel. The NCAA tournament's coming down to the wire. There's no better place to get in on the action than with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's because right now, FanDuel is giving new customers a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just go to fanduel.com slash locked on and sign up today to claim your no sweat first bet. Then you can wager on everything from the money line to point spreads 
to where the team will be cutting down the nets. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So don't miss your shot at a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. Make every moment more with FanDuel. Continuing today's episode of Locked on Wild, once again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. For your second listen, make sure you check out the Locked on NHL podcast to get the full lowdown of everything going on throughout the NHL as we move towards the final couple of weeks of the season. So what has gotten into Matt Boldy? Did he drink Michael Jordan's secret stuff? Uh, made famous in Space Jam, what's what's happening? Well, there are a couple of things that have keyed this run, and let's start with the obvious one. Uh, the insertion of Marcus Johansson onto that line has really transformed that second-line combo of Jewel Eriksson Ek, Marcus Johansson, and Matt Boldy into just a wrecking ball in terms of scoring goals. Look at these numbers for these guys here in the month of March and since they were put together on a line. You've got Johansson, Eriksson Ek, and Boldy in the last 13 games. Eriksson Ek and Johansson both two goals and nine assists. So 11 points in those 13 games. Eriksson Ek is a plus nine. Johansson is a plus eight. And even strength points, uh, Johansson with two goals, eight assists, Eriksson Ek with one goal, 10 assists. So 13 goal, or three goals, 18 assists for those two guys alone in the 13 games that they have been paired together. Matt Boldy in that same stretch, as mentioned, 12 goals, 5 assists, 17 points. He's a plus 12 in that span. He's got 11 even strength goals, 15 even strength points, plus a power play goal and a power play assist as well. Eric Sinek, and it's ironic here too because Eric Sinek's shooting percentage is really not that great. He's at 4.4 during that span. But Marcus Johansson is um he's also at eight. So those two guys, Johansson and Erickson Eck, have really been helping facilitate Matt Boldy on this stretch as the unquestioned go-to guy on that line. Those two are making plays to set him up and allow for him to be the one taking the shots and scoring the goals. And so the first part of the equation for what has keyed Matt Boldy's success is that he is the unquestioned shooter on that line. And he has teammates that have helped move the puck around and get him into spots to be able to do just that. Now that's just one piece of the puzzle. Uh, this, courtesy of the NHL Network, Boldy in February, he had 13 games with zero goals, 42 shots, 23 slot shots. In March so far, 11 goals on 47 shots and 30 slot shots. Now, the numbers, they're not all that different in those areas. Still, same number of shots, but the big difference is those shots that are coming from the slot. Matt Boldy is, he's getting closer to the net on these shots that he's taking, which tells you that he has developed the killer instinct that you want as somebody that is going to go to the net and is going to let it fly. Look at those goals that he scored against the uh, the crack in the other night. He had the one on the power play where he got to in front of the net. Great feed by Marcus Johansson, but he's in a spot up close where he's able to really use the whole complement of the net 
and he just blisters one to the uh, top left corner for the goal. Earlier in the season, it seemed like a lot of Matt Boldy's shots were coming from further out on the perimeter and therefore less chance of being accurate. So let's say he shoots with that same trajectory earlier in the season. Chance it's going to miss the net high. And it's not only, you know, some of those shots from from high up. I mean, he's had some that he's been able to tuck in just underneath the arm of the goalie. But the main thing is that he is going in for the attack. He's going in for the kill from closer up and therefore giving himself more room to work with as opposed to trying to pepper the net from the perimeter, which we all love so much. He's he's just stepping up and he is making plays himself. He's kind of taking things into his own hands and therefore having way more success doing it here in the month of March. And the other part of this the other part of the equation here is as we talked about a little bit just now that killer instinct Matt Boldy has over this month of March he has developed the desire to be the one that is going to embarrass your goalie the one that is going to single-handedly wreck the game for the opponents and so for a guy who earlier in the year was a little more on the tendency to pass type playmaker as opposed to being the one to take the shots, getting him to flip to, okay, I need to be the one shooting the puck. Getting him to flip to that gear as opposed to, well, let's see who else is out here. because. Let's look at it on the power play. Without Kirill in the lineup, you've got Matt Zuccarello, more of a passing playmaker. You've got Marcus Johansson, more of a passing playmaker. You need somebody who's just going to let it rip. And so the guys that are just letting it rip at this point without Kirill in the lineup, Ryan Hartman, one of those, and Matt Boldy now as well. And so that killer instinct that he's developed of just being the one to take the shots, not being afraid to be the one to take the shots, and his teammates seeing all this success and saying, hey, we got to get the puck to Boldy so that he can go bury this one. It's a nice combo platter that has developed, that has turned Matt Boldy from a guy who was on pace to maybe score 21 goals this season to now a guy who should, barring something crazy happening the last eight games of the season, he should hit the 30-goal plateau. It, it has been a very interesting transformation over these last 11 games, which leads you to, is it sustainable? Is this something that can continue, or is this Matt Boldy taking advantage of, of Kirill Kaprizov not being in the lineup and trying to be kind of the, the leader for now. We'll discuss that as we continue today's episode of Locked on Wild after this. Final segment of today's episode of Locked on Wild. Once again, thank you for making Locked on Wild your first listen each and every day. For your second listen, again, make sure you check out the Locked on NHL podcast to get the full lowdown on everything going on throughout the wide world of the NHL as we get towards the final few games of the season. Locked on NHL is available on all of your favorite podcast platforms. Is this going to continue or is Kirill Kaprizov just going to hop right back in and take over as the de facto um, leader of this group? Is Matt Boldy going to go back to the way that he was before Kirill's injury? Well, here's the interesting part about this. If you look at Matt Boldy's uh, game logs throughout the course of the season, so 
let's go back to October. Boldy still had 29 shots. He had five goals in the month of October. And so you look at that shooting 17% in the month of November, 30 shots, scored four goals. So shooting percentage dipped a little bit. In the month of December, 41 shots, but just three goals. So shooting percentage down to 7.3%. Then you have the month of January, 48 shots and uh, four goals. So shooting percentage of 8% there. 42 shots in the month of February, zero goals. And now 47 shots here in the month of March and 12 goals. Matt Boldy has been shooting all season. I think we just are seeing the difference between being a guy who shoots more from the perimeter or from further outside and maybe isn't as accurate as you would as you'd like or or those shots just coming from that point on the on the ice are just not accurate shots anyway. I think it is sustainable maybe not at this level, but I think it is sustainable because of the shift we've seen towards him being a guy that goes to the net as opposed to somebody who just tries to kind of laser those wristers from around the perimeter because he you're going to you're going to obviously not score as many goals when Kirill comes back but I mean the the line mates isn't going to change the shots being taken isn't going to change and now this new mentality of being the de facto shooter on that line is not going to change either so the factors are going to stay the same because Kirill plays top line Boldy plays second line so all of these things that we've seen none of that's going to change the big thing is that what we are getting from Matt Boldy right now to keep the lights on while Kirill is injured, you're not theoretically going to need that level of scoring from him in the postseason. What you need is this. You need a line that when the opponents, whether it be Dallas, whether it be Winnipeg, Seattle, Colorado, you need a line that can step up when Kirill Kaprizov faces as much pressure and attention as he's likely to face once the postseason starts. What was the biggest thing last year against the St. Louis Blues? Kirill Kaprizov was the only one that showed up to the dance. None of the other components really consistently showed up uh, in that series. If you get consistent production from another line, then that series probably goes a different way. And so you're not going to need, you're not going to need Matt Boldy to put up 12 goals in a month. You just need to have that presence you have to honor so that maybe you can't put your top defensive forward group out there on Kaprizov and expect that you're going to be able to, to lock the rest of the lineup down. If the Boldy line can take what they have learned here in this stretch without Kaprizov, if they can take that and apply that going forward, that's where the big difference will come for this team. Because Kirill had, what, seven goals in the um, in the series against the Blues? Seven of the, I don't remember exactly how many they scored, but I know the seven that Kaprizov had was probably almost three quarters of the goals 
that the Wild scored in that series. If you can take this production level, and again, month of March, you've got 39 points in 13 games between those three guys. So you're averaging three points a game from that line. If you can do even close to that, 80% of that in a postseason series, that's that's going to be the difference maker. Um, and if a team is able to shut down Kirill, shut down that top line, well, then that's where you step up and you take the lead, uh, just like they've shown here. So it's going to be interesting to see how this lineup looks once Kirill Kaprizov returns to the lineup. But honestly, I don't think the elements are going to change much because I think while, yes, it's a high shooting percentage that Matt Boldy has had over the course of this month, I just think it's been a philosophical change in his game. And that's something that I don't think is as easy to stop as simply stopping the player. So the Matt Boldy heater continues here through the month of March. And uh, with a couple of big games coming up, we hope he's got a few more goals left in the tank. Uh, we'll see what happens with the game against the Avalanche. And of course, the news that Kirill is going to be skating here this week, which is certainly encouraging. So we will uh, we'll continue to ride the Matt Boldy wave as long as we can and uh, hope that it propels this team uh, into the playoffs as well. That will do it for today's episode of Locked on Wild. So again, now that your first listen of the day is done, make sure you check out the Locked on NHL podcast to get the full lowdown on everything going on in the NHL, both East and West, and which teams are in and which teams are out. You can find Locked on NHL free and available on all of your favorite podcast platforms, just like Locked on Wild is. So make sure that you follow along with us on YouTube or your favorite podcast platforms and social media as well as we guide you through the rest of the season with pre- and post-game content as well as full episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Podcast Network.